China is building some of the largest auto plants in the world along our border in Mexico, and they think they're going to take those cars and sell them into the United States and lose all your jobs in Michigan. And you ought to tell the head of the auto workers, as a union boss, he stinks, because what he's allowing to happen to you as union workers, and we're going to get 90, 95 percent of the auto workers anyway, but we're going to put tariffs on those cars, and we're not going to let them sell those cars in the United States. We're not going to let it happen. All right, Trish Regan joins us now, host of The Trish Regan Show, co-founder of 76research.com. Hey, Trish, good to see you. Um, I, you know, it's, it's so interesting with the EVs and, and the point he makes. You know, China does, you know, have the intention of flooding the market. I think they can make them cheaper than we can here as well. And our companies are bleeding money trying to make these EVs because they're mandated by the government. Well, you know, one thing that Trump understands very, very well, and again, he's got a whole history working in business as opposed to politics, so it makes sense that he would understand this, is how to actually use things like tariffs as a kind of financial weapon. And I think he does this really better than anyone we've seen in recent history. Um, and it's a very direct, very aggressive, but effective way of being able to negotiate, right? In other words, if you've got China and China's trying to flood the market with their stuff, and you don't have any way of coming back at that. Too often, so many of our presidents, Rob, they haven't really cared about the workers. They really haven't cared about American companies per se. They care more about, say, shareholders in those American companies. And the shareholders, all they want to do is make money. So they don't care where they're making their goods or how they're flooding things. You know, if they can get a market in China, for example, they'll take that market in China. And so you have to ask yourself, at what point does this really stop? And I think that Trump has always stood for this America first agenda where it does kind of stop with him. In other words, Someone's got to be there looking out for Americans themselves. Capitalism works. We love capitalism, but you do have to have certain protections in place. And being able to use financial tools like tariffs, that's one of the most effective ways to get what you want done. Yeah, so true. And there's, there's not enough people looking out for, you know, as, as, this, as we move in a certain direction, there's not enough people looking out for, you know, the guys that are just working at these companies. You know, I mean, for the last 30, 40 years, they've been selling out the American worker in every way, every way possible. No, it's Trump really true. I, I think this is really important to remember because yeah. this balance, right, this balance between labor and capital has gotten so out of whack. So yeah. capital is the only thing that's been rewarded. And he recognizes that. He's always recognized that. And I think that's one of the reasons why during his administration, you actually saw median incomes growing more than they had right. in some 50 years, because the economic policy that was put in place actually rewarded the middle class. Imagine that. Yeah, something else.